this this that hooked that both dog teams to it, and you see that they got a toboggan under it, and they bring it back to camp. Good morning, everybody. Look at that C46 taxiing out. Twin Otter taking off. Welcome to Yellowknife. It is a chilly minus 27 degrees Celsius, which is I think around um, about minus 17 degrees Fahrenheit around there. Before I was here in Yellowknife, I want to welcome everybody, all the new subscribers. Uh, there's a lot of you in the last little bit. So welcome. Today we are excited because the mini rib that we threw on eBay is closing here in a couple hours and we're going to know who won that and we're going to now head into the shop and see how we're going to make the mini rib. I'm going to give you guys some history on uh, the fox moth, get an update, see how Benjamin's doing. Oh, whoo, losing my, my voice here in the cold. Oh, and before I head inside, lots of airplanes making noise down here on the ground, but way up in the sky. I want to say hello to all the airplanes way over here somewhere. Uh, is a Speedbird 747 on its way to San Francisco. Yesterday, 777 to Tokyo, Tokyo, Chicago. You guys uh, calling in on the radio, sure makes my day. So uh, you got we got viewers on the ground and we have some plane saver viewers way up in the sky too. So thank you everybody. Let's head in there and warm up. Welcome to season two, episode 32 of Plane Savers. Well, folks, we are back inside warming up, and look at this. Benjamin has been working around the clock, and he actually took our room, our uh, our Fokker room here, and made it something special. Look at all this organization, way more organized than I ever have ever been. I got some big news, folks. Ron Sand Jr., actually, I wrote an email to him because we're missing some plants. I asked him if I could purchase some plants, he is graciously going to donate us the most up-to-date current Ron Sands plans to the project, which is very, very, very cool. So in thanking him, uh, as a huge thank you to Ron Sands Jr. and Ron Sands Sr., whose the whole thing is based off of, we're going to donate or dedicate a rib, donate a mini rib, dedicate a big rib to Ron Sands uh, Sr., uh, in the name of Ron Sands Jr. So that is very cool. Uh, those are gonna be on their way again after Christmas. So uh, the, what that's gonna do is help us with um, the amount of material that we need um, uh, to not only uh, build the, uh, the wings, but to actually finish it. You know, there's leading edges and trailing edges and there's equipment, uh, basically equipment lists that we're missing. So uh, let's go to the fox moth folks. So this is what was on the last episode and this is what is getting most of the subscribers right now. People are, the heck did I step on? People are um, going crazy for this airplane. Look at it folks. It is one amazing airplane. Pilot sits up there in a basic open cockpit and the <laughs> passengers sit inside the fuselage right behind the engine. This is one wacky, crazy design. So to explain more about this design, let's go back in time. Let's do a quick history lesson and see what is a fox moth? Where did it come from? Check this out. The de Havilland 83 fox moth was created by Jeffrey de Havilland in the mid 1920s and the prototype made its first flight January 29th, 1932. The aircraft was designed as a low cost and economical light passenger aircraft. The pilot sat in an open cockpit and the four passengers could take place in a small cabin enclosed within the fuselage. Like Joe said, the fox moth used mainly tiger moth components like the wings, engine mounting and undercarriage. Most fox moths were delivered to commercial operators all around the world, including Qantas in Australia and Ward Air in Canada. But it was also used by many air forces around the world, including the Royal Canadian Air Force. The fox moth cruised around 96 miles an hour and had a range of 370 nautical miles or 684 kilometers. Uh, the rate of climb was around 450 feet per minute. 
a total of 153 Fox Moths were built. 98 of them were built in the United Kingdom, two in Australia, and 53 in Canada after the war. Back in 1937, the Havilland Canada's facility in Downsville, Ontario was the first overseas builder of the Fox Moth. The Canadian built Fox Moths marked with the letter C and differed from the British built aircraft. The most important difference was the engine, as it was a 145 horsepower Gypsy Major 1C instead of the 120 horsepower Gypsy 3. The de Havilland 83C was fitted with a larger cockpit opening, a larger windscreen and canopy for cold weather operations. The Canadian Belt Foxmoth was an excellent and economical bush blade. Between 10 and 15 aircraft still exist worldwide and one is still flying in Gatineau, Quebec with vintage wings of Canada. So we heard the history, now in your own words, why? Well, uh, back when we were living at Gord Lake in my preschool days, uh, they busted this airplane at camp. They were, my dad was on board, not the pilot, he was a passenger, and they busted it, and that's him. He hooked up two dog teams to bring the airplane back to camp, and they stripped the airplane for its usable parts and made a playhouse out of it for me. So uh, I guess... They tell me the reason they put me in there is they could lock the canopy while they're blasting. I wouldn't get in the way, but I still remember getting in the airplane, and they tell me to go to y'all and get a load of groceries. And uh, I could still, to this day, still smell the glue in the wood. It was a fairly new airplane at the time, and so I always wanted to uh, have a fox moth because this one here ended up in the Yellowknife Museum. They they rescued about three of them and they built one of them. If anybody comes to Yellowknife can go to Yellowknife Museum and see it. That was my playhouse and and uh, so that was prior to going to school. So I left Gordon Lake and I was old enough to go to school. Uh, Gordon Lake is a mining camp, small mining camp, 60 miles north of Yellowknife that is where I grew up with my parents. And so anyway, that Christmas I remember sitting with my dad at night and he told me he was uh, carving jack pine like pieces of a tree that you'd normally burn his carving handles for the dog sleigh. But Christmas morning, the dog sleigh handles was actually a fox moth that he'd built for me. And over the years, of course, I lost most of it, but still I was able to keep it over the, all those years. I was able to keep it and I painted it a few times and drove it nails and I lost most of it, but still, would kid, would kid keep something that his dad, uh, a uh, car for him 70 years ago, and that was my Christmas present. And then, and there's a picture here, right here, there's a picture right here of uh, behind Gordy Wanacott, who was the pilot of the, of the Fox Moth. This right here is a hanger, and in that hanger is my Stinson and uh, Fox Moth, and written on it is called Gordon Lake Airways. So maybe it, that aviation was getting instilled in me at the time. So over the years, I've um, I've gathered up parts, and this is the door off the airplane. And of course, you see it says McAvoy Diamond Drilling and Development. Um, that's where uh, my my grandfather, my dad, my mother were working, and of course, in later years. I went to work for the McAvoy Brothers as McAvoy Air Service. So my first job flying airplanes was with McAvoy. So this uh, this Fox Moth goes back a long ways with me to uh, to uh, I guess uh, my childhood. And so it's always in the back of your mind you'd like to fly one. And so now I'm going to fly one. So you say that Fox Moth toy was was it your first airplane? Yeah, yeah, I got that. Uh, it was probably the last Christmas I had at Gordon Lake. So I, I was probably five years old when I got that. And uh, I still got the Stinson that where it serviced our camp. It's in Hay River. Um, your mother has it in her china cabinet. No, on top of the china cabinet. It doesn't fit in it. And uh, I got the Fox Moth here. And so I, I was always amazed that I was able to keep it with me through all those years and moves that it never got discarded or so it must have been um, I guess to me it was quite a a treasure I guess you call it so now now I've uh, got to the stage where I'm going to be able to fly a fox one 
I wasn't able to fly them at that time. I was only five years old. But uh, cycles go around now, I'll fly it. And the only thing is, I, I just hope I can find some people that were of that era that I can take for a ride. And um, speaking of people helping out, uh, a lot of people have been sending you messages from all over the world. On the last episode, we said you might need some parts. Now you're getting messages where from? Like you were talking New Zealand, UK. Yeah, I, I got messages today and yesterday, and uh, they come on that um, internet stuff. And yeah, from all over the world, I got to sit down this weekend and read them all. They're, they're all very helpful. They all want to partake, and, and they all have one little part or piece. Or they got a drawing, or they got a book, or they got a story, and and uh, from what they've sent in the last few days, I, what I've been able to read, I've learned a, a a real wealth of information about the different between a fox moth and a tiger moth. See, they had those tiger moths here when I was a kid. They had them on skis in the winter, and they had them on floats in the summer. So this one will be on floats. That's, are you gonna? Is it gonna be yellow or red? Oh no, it's going to be red. It's going to be bright red. It's it, it's going to look just like this one here, you know. It's uh, that's exactly the way it shall look, you know. So and, and just like your toy. Yeah, yeah, the toy. Yeah, the the, the little fox moth was red. Just in time for Christmas. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I got pictures here of it, when they brought it in to oh, make really? it at the museum, this is a helicopter net bringing it in, and that's. Uh, if, when you paint fabric red, it, it, it fades into gray, and this is the, the wings off it out at our old camp at Gordon Lake. So that's in the museum, so I won't be able to fly that one, but I'll fly the, the mate to it, that one there, and, and I'll, uh, I'll go back to Gordon Lake where it used to be. I'll, I'll land right here. I'll la I know exactly where this is, right in front of our camp. I know exactly where camp's over here. So I'll, I'll land that fox moth right there. Hope I don't break the skis off and the dog team is going to haul me home. <laughs> so four, again, four old patches. Is this, this is the dog team bringing the airplane home after it had a incident yeah. on the lake and became your playhouse. Yeah. So this this dad hooked up both dog teams to it, and you see that they got a toboggan under it, and they're bringing it back to camp. So I have a little bit of history with the fox moth. That's amazing. So speaking of history. Six months ago today, you know what you know what we're doing exactly six months ago today? Well, tomorrow is Pearl Harbor, so that's... It's exactly six months from D-Day. So this time, six months ago... The six, yeah, okay. We were flying DTD on yeah, season uh, one. Yeah, six, uh, yeah that, that six months went by quick, eh? There she goes. Gear on its way. So if you're just joining us as one of the new subscribers, go check out season one. Uh, it's amazing. I'm going to leave that here, folks. There's so much history here. So much stuff to discover. Uh, and so follow along as we rebuild the airplane. Uh, basically for, um, for a notice is anything that's not yellow uh, in this little graphic here is what we need. So anything that's in black and white is what we need. And uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Well, I want to have you thank all the people that I responded to to my request for parts and pieces and drawings. I, I really appreciate the fact that from around the world they, they send messages and also messages of encouragement. Like, go get her done, get her in the air, quit dinking around. So you, what do you think about this plane saving thing? It's pretty good, eh? Well. You've been doing it your whole uh, life, so. Yeah, it's a good thing we're not what they call penny savers and money savers. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> that won't work. Okay, so folks, I'm gonna leave it right there. Uh, if you wanna follow along, uh, please do subscribe. We're going to be getting ourselves into a lot of trouble trying to get both airplanes ready in time. Um, Sean Bunn, congratulations on winning the mini rib on eBay. We're going to be working on it this weekend. It's Friday afternoon, folks. We ran out of time. It's already dark outside. So we'll see you very soon in the next episode. Bye. Take care, guys. And ladies. Get up here, Patch. Come on. Get up here. Get up here, Patch. Here. Here, Patch and I are here. This is Patch and I making business. <laughs> hey, Patch.